If you subscribe to my rcplaneviews.com channel, you may have seen the Carbon Z Cessna 150 at the field video I did earlier this year. You do subscribe, right? Well, that Carbon Z 150 was a Flying Buddies plane, and I had the chance to see it fly throughout the summer. When it went on sale, I had to go for it. The Carbon Cessna C-150 is one of the Carbon series put out by Horizon Hobbies. The series includes the Carbon Cub and the Carbon Z T-28. The Carbon Z Cessna 150 has an 84-inch wingspan, a 62-inch length, and is powered by a 50-size brushless electric motor controlled by a 60-amp ESC. That makes it about a 22 or 23% scale model of the full-scale Cessna 150 with its 33-foot wingspan and 24-foot length. The model comes in two versions, the bind-and-fly, which only requires a transmitter and battery, and the plug-and-fly, which also requires a receiver of your choice. I chose the bind-and-fly version. The included receiver is the Spectrum receiver, which includes the popular AS3X stabilization system and an optional programmable SAFE or SAFE system. The SAFE system includes control input limiting and automatic wing leveling when the sticks are released. Let's take a look at what's in the box and get started with the assembly. When you take it out of the retail box, you can see everything is well packed. Lots of foam dividers, sheeting, and some of the major parts are strapped down to reduce the chance of damage in shipping. So here's what things look like when they come out of the box. Okay, so the first part of our assembly is to uh, put on the main landing gear. The two parts um, fit and then the little shield comes over the top. And the way I've done that is I put the screws in the little shield and then connected uh, through or put the screws through the, the holes in the landing gear so I can kind of get this all down in one piece. We're going to see if that works here. Get the screws in the holes. That seems to be working. Now we'll just screw them in tight. So we've got them in there, and now I'm just going to snug them in tight. And there's the landing gear. The second part of our landing gear installation uh, is to install the nose gear. Now the, the nose gear assembly uh, comes pre-assembled. I double-checked the tightness of all the bolts in here, and they were really tight, so I didn't uh, disassemble it. Some people have said they found them a little loose, and so you may be sure to check that. Now on the bottom of the landing gear, there are a couple of arrows right here, which point to the front. And then the other thing I did off camera is I connected this long uh, steering rod. And that was really pretty easy to do. There's just a little uh, two and a half millimeter uh, bolt and nut that uh, you connect to put over, over a ball joint. And so that, uh, that went together uh, pretty easily. It's a little nylon lock nut. So what the instructions say next is to snake the control rod through the model. So we'll do that. It's going to get a little tight here. And then we're just going to drop the nose gear into place. And so that's the installation on the bottom. Next, we're going to turn it over and we're going to screw it down. So let me do that. So with the battery hatch removed, when you look in there, you're going to see two um, holes 
um, right next to where they have the ESC mounted and their little brass fittings in the assembly that we just put in. And so I'm going to drop these little screws that they've got identified for this task into the holes. And then use my screwdriver to tighten them down. I'm going to snug these down pretty tight. Again, they're going into brass fittings, and so it's not like I'm digging into plastic. So I've got them nice and snug. And so now I've got the nose gear assembled, and all I need to do is connect that connecting rod up here at the top, which was what we'll do next. Now the, the steering rod connects to one of the holes in the servo, the rudder servo right up here, and then it's held in place with one of these little um, uh, rod keepers. Now since it's so far down in there, I'm not going to really stick the camera down in there, but just know that that's what I'm about to do. So the next step in the instructions is to install the motor. I've double checked that the, um, the, uh, the bolts holding the crossbar onto the motor are nice and tight, and they are. And uh, so we're just going to uh, put the motor wires through the, the gap into the area behind the, uh, the cockpit. And then we're going to uh, fit the, the crossbars in there so that they fit. So um, there's the moldings right here in here. And so you can just kind of maneuver those in there to get it in there nice and snug. And then we're going to be using the big black screws that are in the kit. And you'll notice that these have got some thread lock material on them, so that's good. They're mounted into brass receivers, so it's metal to metal. So we just snug that up. And then we've got the other three that we need to do, so I'll go ahead and do those other three right now. Okay, we've got the motor cinched down and, and the, um, the cross mounting bracket and the engine motor mount have got the down and the right thrust. So if you look down at the motor from the top here, you can see it's got down and right. The other thing I pulled through the little wiring uh, harness for the front landing lights. So I've got that stuck out here and then the cowling going on the front and that also then has uh, wires for landing lights. So let me plug those in next. Match the reds and the reds and the blacks to the blacks. Okay, that's all good. I can pull that wire through gently as I move this in. Got that mounted on. And then I've got two little screws that screw into plastic um, mounting receivers. And these little guys have got the coarse wood type screw um, uh, threads to them. These others have been, um, you know, machine screws. And this one is is more of a wood screw because it's going into this plastic plastic receiver. Now there's really no structure holding this. It's just, you know, the cosmetic part of the cowling so and because I'm screwing into plastic I'm just going to snug them in so I don't strip the plastic. And that's all snugged in there now too. Now the next step in the instructions is to put the propeller on and I'm not going to do that. Um, I've got some radio programming to do. I want to check the rotation of the motor, that kind of thing. And I don't like to do that with the propeller on for safety reasons. So I'll put a little piece of painter's tape here on the motor shaft to check the rotation when I get to that point. And then when I'm happy with all of the radio programming, I'll put the propeller on last. So you can see I've got the rudder mounted to the vertical stabilizer. The uh, CA type hinges are, are glued into the rudder here, uh, but you need to glue them into the vertical stabilizer. Now, thin CA has got the consistency of like water, so I put a little bit of uh, painter's tape here just because I tend to be a little sloppy. And then I'm going to use a little uh, 
uh, applicator here so I can really get in to there. And so what I'll be doing is putting the CA on the hinge, letting it soak in, and then between the hinge to allow that uh, CA to saturate the fabric of the hinge, and then also go between the two stems of the hinge down into the foam so it has a nice firm connection. And I'm just going to work my way down, uh, give that a little bit to dry according to the instructions, and then I'll flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. You notice I have the uh, wire that comes out from the, um, the vertical stabilizer. That's the little flashing tail LED that's supposed to go on the left side and it'll fit in this little groove. So, uh, of course, it was folded to the right side. The instructions say to make sure you bring it out the left side. And so I've done that. And so now it's just going to be a matter of letting the CA dry and flipping it and doing the other side. Now there's just a couple of more things to finish up the tail. One of them is to get this plastic end piece out of the parts bag. Uh, and then the other is to move this wire with the LED connected to it. And uh, what I discovered is that the, the wire was a little short. You can see it's supposed to come right down here and then go up and I didn't have enough room. So I, I just made a little indentation in the foam to go through the other um, um, ridge that's there. So that'll get me into this without uh, it really changing the appearance any. It's just, uh, you may want to pull that wire out a little bit more when you put together yours. So I'm going to use a little bit of CA on the foam, and then I'm going to slide the end cap over the end, and then I'll add the tape to cover it up. And again, the tape is in with the parts. So let's do that now. There's the CA. We'll get this end cap to slide over it. Get the wire in the ridge. Get it depressed in there. I'm going to give that just a couple minutes to, um, to set up, and then I'll put that piece of tape over it. So with the tape on over the wires on the other side, the last thing to do on the rudder is to take one of these small 2.5 millimeter screws and uh, locking nuts and connect the push rod. So I've got it through there and uh, just thread it on the nut and we'll just finish tightening it up. And that's all there is to that. So the horizontal stabilizer comes together next and it looks like it goes together pretty easily. Just a, a small spar fits through a tube in the tail. And then that little nub goes over the brass fitting and we'll use one of our screws for that. We'll just screw it in. And then we got that first one in, we'll move to the other side. The second part of the horizontal stabilizer goes together the same way. We'll take the um, spar and put it into the hole in the horizontal stabilizer, um, put the screw in the brass fitting, and then as we push this together, we're going to put this little uh, square piece over the corresponding piece on the other side, which will tie the two together. Now with them together, we'll put the screw through the little tab in the bottom. Tighten it up. We're good to go. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll connect the 
um, control rod to the control horn using a little two and a half millimeter screw and the um, lock nut the same way that we did on the rudder. Now we're just about done. And so one of the last steps we have to do is to connect the struts here um, to, the, uh, to the wings themselves. And that's done pretty easily with one of the longer two and a half millimeter um, screws with the little uh, nylon lock nuts. And so the, you'll see when you look at the fitting here that they only really go in one way. The nut goes in from the front and then the back has got a hexagonal shape to the, um, the hole so that it'll hold the nut in place while you're tightening it. So that's pretty handy. And so we'll just tighten that up. Got this, the, you can see the screw is in the nylon here, so it should lock nice and tight. And then this works pretty easily. So with the supports um, connected, now we're just going to be a matter of attaching the wings. And you see that it works pretty well. It's got, you know, servo connectors here and then the sockets up here on the wings. So there's not a lot of wires you have to mess with. These two little metal prongs will make sure that the alignment's right, along with two plastic prongs, again, to help uh, secure the alignment as you work your way through. And so the spar goes into the, the socket for the spar. And then as you bring the wing closer to the fuselage, you're going to need to make sure that you get the support up there so it will fit into the socket. So now we've got everything aligned. We can just push the wing. onto the model. And then down here, I'll be kind of working blind from the back side, but we've got this uh, metal plug or uh, spike that goes through. To the bottom, and then there's just a little R clip goes through the little hole in the bottom of that spike to make sure that it all stays connected. So that's really all there is to attaching the wings on the outside. Let me readjust the camera and we'll take a look inside this top hatch to see how the, they're secured uh, from the inside now as well. Now to keep the wings from sliding, sliding off of the airplane, the kit comes with two of these long kind of narrow uh, screws and they've got the big thumb screw kind of handles on the end so that it makes them easy to to put in. So there's a hole in here you just slide it in and twist it on. This one you can see they got the camera set so you can see this one get it going direction here. Just tighten it up, snug it up a little bit. Do the same thing with the one over here. And now we've got the wings attached. Now it's just a matter of clipping the, the cover back on the hatch and we're looking pretty good. Now the last part of the structure that we really need to deal with is just to snap in the antennas. And so they come with a little snap end and there's, you see a couple of holes in the plastic part of where the wings uh, connect here. And so it's just gonna be a matter of shoving them in, letting them snap into place. So now we've got everything done except for the propeller. So at this point, I'm gonna do a little radio programming uh, and then I'll be back to, uh, to wrap this up. So at this point, I finished programming the radio, bound the radio to the airplane, done all that kind of thing. Uh, and so it's safe now to put on the propeller, which is pretty much the last part of the assembly. And it's a pretty typical installation for a friction type collet. As you can see, you've got the collet that goes on the motor shaft, the ring that'll cinch it down when you apply pressure with the nut, 
Next is the back of the spinner. And it fits over that very nicely. Next is the propeller. And the back of the propeller has got some little um, ridges on it that'll match the little ridges here in the um, in the propeller back of the spinner. So we'll put that on. And then next is the nut. We'll get that down just finger tight and see how that's going to fit. Yeah, that's good. So we've got just a crescent wrench and we'll, we'll cinch that down. Got that nice and tight. Place the spinner on. A nut goes through the front, or a little screw. And we'll just tighten that on. And now we've got it all together. So it's a pretty typical installation of these friction collets, uh, and it went on very easily. Now we've got just a couple of last minute things to do uh, to include balancing the airplane, checking the CG, and checking the control throws. So you can see I have the airplane up on my uh, CG machine, and I've got it set at 95 millimeters, which is the front end of the balance. There's a lot of room in the under the windscreen to move your battery around. And because this takes a wide range of batteries, I'm really not going to go into that with much detail, other than to say that the six cell battery that I'm using is placed fairly far back into the, um, the battery cavity to get it to balance here at this 95 millimeter uh, setting. And then you also see I've got my little control meter or control throw meter sitting down there on the table. Uh, that'll be the next step where uh, just uh, fire it up, turn the radio on, and then make sure that the control throws are what is recommended in the manual. Uh, and then I can use the, um, the servo uh, settings in my radio to drive the throws uh, down if they're uh, greater than what's required. So now, some closing comments. The Carbon Z Cessna 150 came out of the box in good shape. It was well packed and didn't suffer any damage during shipping. The fit and finish are nice, the paint is crisp, and the lines are clean. It took a long time to assemble the model with moving the camera around a bunch, but without all that, you'll probably spend less than two hours putting it together. There were a couple of issues, though. The wire to the LED on the rudder was too short, as I mentioned during the assembly. Others have complained about this, and still others have said they had plenty of length, so it may be a bit of a crapshoot for you. The nose wheel adjustment requires some patience. With the servo centered, it's unlikely that the steering arm will be the right length. That means you'll need to take the nose gear assembly in and out to adjust the clevis on the wheel end of the rod. I taped the assembly in during this process, so I didn't have to screw and unscrew the mounting screws in and out each time. It's not hard, but you may need to pull it out and in several times, depending on how good your guesses are. The cavity under the overwing hatch is pretty big, but the opening isn't. It's difficult to attach the steering arm and access the receiver if you have big hands. A couple of hemostats made working in that area a bit easier. The Cessna 150's tires are very hard. Many have complained that they cause quite a bit of noise during takeoff and landing. I'm not changing mine right away, but I suspect I will soon. The long bind extension wire in the fuselage is a nice touch. I already mentioned the difficulty in working on the receiver compartment. Getting a bind plug in and out of there would have been a real pain. My Carbon Z Cessna 150 balanced properly with a 5,000 milliamp six cell 
battery fairly far aft on the battery tray. There's a lot of room to help you deal with various battery sizes and weights. Speaking of balance, the prop was balanced pretty well. It needed only a scrape or two with some sandpaper on the slightly heavy blade. I hadn't downloaded airplane setup files for my Spectrum DX9 before. The C150 has one on the download page and it really simplified radio programming. All the settings listed in the manual were preset, so I only needed to verify the settings, not dial them in. That was a real time saver. Last, I'm not sure why big model producers continue to have instructions that ask you to put the props on early in the build. It's just dangerous. There's nothing that requires the prop during the build or radio setup until you're ready to put it on the balance stand and take it outside to run it up. Save the prop for last. Let's take a look at this big bird outside and do a quick video walk around. Before we go, please click the thumbs up button for this video if you found it useful and be sure to subscribe to the RCPlaneViews.com channel if you want to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching.